Hi guys, this is video number six in my Lightroom uh, tutorial series and uh, now we're going to take a look at two things. You know when you save for Instagram, Instagram only uses two uh, aspect ratio. It uses one by one and four by five and I find my photos don't always fit this format. So I'm going to show you how I make a, a square mat uh, as a background for my uh, Instagram photos in Lightroom. And also I'm gonna show you how to make a panel. So here we have Lightroom open once again, and I'm gonna start with the panel. And uh, as you can see here, if you know Iceland a little bit, you can see here I have a two, four, six, seven picture uh, panel of uh, Vestrahot Mountain in Stockness, Iceland. But I don't think I need this last one, so I'm just going to do these six. I pick, I uh, hold down shift, and I pick the last one. Then I right click on it. And I choose uh, merge to somewhere, photo merge panorama. So here we have the uh, merged uh, photos. Uh, this is a fairly simple uh, uh, panorama. This is one row, a few photos. One row panoramas, I usually go with cylinder. Uh, if I have many rows, like three or four rows, and uh, and uh, then columns. I go for cervical. Uh, that could also do a 360 panel. And perspective is something if you uh, if you do an architecture and uh, stuff like that, then your lines need to be straight. To merge uh, panorama in, in in Lightroom is a fairly simple task. It is uh, it works most of the time. Uh, occasionally it fails and uh, there is really nothing you can do. If, if Lightroom fails, it, it, it just cannot merge the files. So, uh, there is another, there are other software, uh, just for, for uh, panels like PDGUI and more. But, uh, usually if something goes wrong, it's because of parallax. You have, if you have a, a foreground fairly close to you, you have a background, and when you move the camera, um, the, foreground, the foreground is not in the same place in every photo. So it, it, it confuses the algorithm. And it is better to do it correctly, to shoot that correctly with, uh, with a nodal rail. Um, and um, that's not complicated but it's out of the scope of this video. I have, however, uh, a pretty good video about that where I go into details, videos here in the corner, how you shoot uh, for parallax uh, with, and, and to move the nodal point of your camera. So, but let's continue with this. So here we have the merge file. It is pretty big, as you can see when you, uh, when you zoom in to one by one, it's a huge file. And now we just edit. Um, do you edit these files before you merge them or not? Well, it doesn't really matter if you do it or if you don't, because uh, what happens here with this file, it makes a DNG file, so it's still a raw format. It's, it's, it's not a pixel. Like if you would merge this in PDGUI or Photoshop or some other, other uh, 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 panorama merged software, you could uh, end up with a pixel file. And this, in this case, you don't. However, if you do edit these files, you have to you have to copy the edit. Let's find uh, one photo here, uh, maybe this one, and add it a little bit here. You can see the highlights here. I would drop down the highlights a little bit. We went through over this in our editing uh, videos here. Remove chromatic apparition, 
enable co uh, profile, profile corrections. And, uh, you know, you do what you need to do with your, uh, oops, not add point, just move the point like that. And uh, maybe add a little texture, vibrance, and uh, I don't know, go for bluish a little bit. No, like that. Uh, there we go. Okay, so with this, I need to. Well, I I I have this photo selected. I just edited. It. I shift click the last photo. So the photo that was selected first is going to be my master. So I'll sync all these changes, press sync. And uh, sometimes you need to, when, you, when, you, when you're syncing the same uh, edits to uh, uh, files, like if you have a party or an event or something, and everything is basically the same, you might want to skip like local adjustments or, uh, or crop or spot removal or stuff like that. But this is all the same, so I'll just check all here and synchronize. So then all these photos, are, uh, uh, oh, I need these, this one also, the last one. So I'll just uh, select this one, hold down shift, and sync this one too, like that. So now they all have the same edit, but I haven't added this one except what I did a little bit now. So, so I would drop down the uh, highlights a little bit, get something going here. Remember, this is still a little light. Uh, I would uh, maybe do a gradient here. Maybe I just drop down the uh, exposure a little bit to get this even out. There we go. Something like that. So that's panel. Uh, pretty simple, you know. Uh, there's not not much to it, and uh, and uh, and like I said, I have more in depth video just for panel, both shooting and editing it. Uh, you can see it here in 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 the corner or in the in the description also but now let's uh, see about uh, how I export the files for um, Instagram Instagram has its preferred aspect ratio which are four by five and it's one by one so it's a it's a square and uh, like this photo here, I edit this photo uh, in a co completely different format. And if I go here to um, aspect ratio and I and I just one by one, I can see like, yeah, it's nice, but it's not what I wanted. So then I can go four by five. Same, it's, it's not what I uh, wanted. Uh, I wanted, this. So uh, how do I do that? How do I upload this photo to Instagram? You make a square mat for, uh, so I'm gonna make a square mat. I'm gonna make a mat one by one and fit this photo within that mat. You can also make another mat, which is then four by five uh, for your verticals. Uh, it's, it's the same process. Now I'm going to do the one by one. So I'm going to go in print. And uh, here I have the photo. It's probably on an A4 page or something like that. Uh, I cannot use that. So I go here to page setup. Uh, I choose format for any printer and paper size I go for man, it's custom size. So here I have some uh, custom size, um, this is like a 12 millimeter, that's not very big. So what I need is, I need, uh, well, Instagram wants your uh, photos not be wider than 1080 pixels, 1080 pixels. 
So it can't be uh, 1,350 pixel tall. So uh, 1,350 uh, and uh, 1080 is then four by five. But I want one by one. So I need uh, 1080. So, but 1080, here I have millimeters. Uh, I can, I can, if I write 1080 millimeters here, I'm going to end up with a pretty, uh, you know, a wrong size. So what do I do? I, I need to convert it to, uh, to uh, millimeters or centimeters. So if I, there's a website here, you can Google this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of it. I just uh, punch in, in pixel, uh, 1080. And then the uh, computer gives me uh, 28 centimeters, uh, 575 millimeters. Okay, so because this is asking for millimeters, I guess, you know, 285 should be close enough. So I'm going to do that. 285 and 285, one by one, a square. And then I press OK, and then I press OK. So now I got my square. Now I'll just, I can just move these guys here how I want. I just drag these lines here. Or you can change the cell size here. But I just like to move it because I move this all the way. So now I have my aspect ratio, whatever it was, whatever I added it in, in a one by one. And you probably see them on, on, on uh, Instagram. Uh, this is the reason uh, why there are so uh, such a big borders. You can you can you can choose different background or you can have a stroke uh, around the uh, photo or something. I don't, you know, uh, Instagram uh, background is white, so I just keep it as white. So to save it, I go here a little uh, further down. Well, one thing more, I can do an identity plate, which basically means that I can uh, drag this all around the mat. But uh, I would just want to use my watermark and uh, that goes on the photo where your watermark goes uh, regularly. So, so now I got my photo uh, on a one by one and I got my logo and now I'm just gonna go here to uh, file resolution uh, 72 is enough and uh, if if you if 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 printer is selected here you're not gonna print it you're gonna save this to a JPEG file so uh, JPEG file, 72, 100% quality, profile needs to be sRGB, uh, otherwise it's going to look funny. If you if you uh, uh, save it with uh, Adobe RGB, it, it could flatten out the colors a little bit. So ex export it in the right color profile. So that's sRGB, and then print to file. And then it just asks you the file name, and uh, I just give them that and save. So I follow it here to uh, my desktop. Here it is. So here you can see the file. And here's my web version. Now I upload it to Instagram. And uh, what I do, I upload two files to to Instagram. I, I, uh, I uh, make a, a, a the regular file, which is in this case, this file, I upload that. And uh, then I also, and then it cuts down to a square format. Then I also upload because because this is what you see in the little boxes. So I like to, I like to move that around and maybe steer that a little bit. But then people have the option to go here and see the, the whole thing. So that's it. That's panel. And that's how I export for Instagram. Uh, I hope you uh, took something from it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you.
in the next video, which is, by the way, the last video in this series. Thank you for watching and goodbye.